questions? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I have a question. Um, I recently encountered some business owners that seem to have um, maybe too much of an emotional connection to their businesses, kind of their that's their baby, and they're maybe loving their baby to death a little bit. And I've also recently become involved into um, entrepreneurship businesses, and I want to try and avoid that for myself, although I can see where you want to get involved and have a stranglehold on this thing. Um, I want to know if you guys used any tools or did you experience anything like that where you maybe emotionally managed the situation a little too much? Yeah, uh, the baby thing. Uh, when you start a business, it is your baby. And as you start looking for resources, you have to start letting people babysit your baby. And then you start sending your baby to school. Next thing you know, your baby's in college. And if you just want to hold your baby and be a self-proprietor, that's wonderful. But if you want your business to grow, you have to have the help of other people and other finances behind it. And it is hard. And to release your baby, you have to give it to people that you trust and you can have faith in. And that is very, very scary. But over time, 20 years in, I have been able to do that now because of the people. And I'm still learning every day, trust me. But, but I found that the goodness of people is usually there to support you. Usually. But going into business is like getting married, you know, uh, with other people. And it's, you've got to pick your mates or your, your business partner as well, I should say. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Another important aspect about that is I can't ask Danny to give me his opinions without first giving him permission to criticize me because he's not going to feel as open to say what needs to be said unless I give him that permission for him to know, say what needs to be said, there won't be any backlash. And that's got to be stated in when, like Shane said, when you're picking people out in any scenario, employee, employees, um, management, but, I mean, the, that was one of the hardest things to overcome. And in all the books you read about, you know, the art of the start and how to get your business going is lead, putting your, separating your emotions and your passions. That's a tough thing to do. And it's tough to hear that criticism, especially when you've invested thousands of hours and thousands of dollars in this. The last thing I want to hear somebody say, not going to work. If they say that, I, my next question is, you talk about becoming no, numb to no, the word no. From now on, anytime I hear the word no, I ask why. Because I want to know what the objection is. And if I know what the objection is, I know if I can try to find out if I can overcome it or not. So, yeah, it's a tough to separate emotion from passion. But when you have good people around you, they, they will help you do that. So, but it's, it's great that you already picked that out. And, and if they're friends of yours, I would go to them and, and ask them for, you know, can I have permission to tell you what I'm really seeing as your friend without feeling, you know, you're being criticized. So. Um, I know it's a, like a star question, but um, we came from uh, another country four months ago and we need to find the best way to start our own business. I don't know if the chamber has uh, a, like a vision to, because we have a lot of ideas with my husband and, but uh, we have, uh, we, we found a lot of problems because we need some license, some insurance. Uh, uh, we are like, <coughs> and I don't know if you or your, the chamber can help. Well, we, we better be addressing that and that's exactly <laughs> what we can do and will do if you will exchange some cards after the meeting and let us help you narrow your focus and see what you want to do and come on the 27th and have a room full of other people that can help you too but i'd be honored to help you. great any other questions there's one question and i got several times and we have been end on that one is it better to buy an existing business or start your own business if you've got an idea existing similar type things. And of course it's a depends question. 
So the question, the question was, is it better to buy a business or start your own? Right. And buy an existing but similar. Maybe something off of her question. So, you know, if I want to get into the business, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur, is it better for me to buy an existing business because it's got some sales and some history, or should I just start it on my own? Coming from somebody like me, I'd say start your own every time and, and, and start it by yourself and, and be your own uh, direction. But everybody can't do that. You know, it's, it's not made for everybody. Some people need to buy businesses. And if you're good at, there's a book called The E-Myth, The Entrepreneurial Myth. I think it's by a guy named Gerber. But uh, that book talks about an apple pie factory and it's, it's incredible because it talks about all the different aspects to a business as the lady in the back was talking about, you know, I gotta be payroll, I gotta do insurance, I gotta do this, gotta do that. You gotta find out, are you the technician, you're the dreamer, or are you the manager? And if you're a manager or a technician, it'd probably be better to buy a business and be a franchise. But if you're the dreamer and you've got a dream, then you're the entrepreneur and start your own. That's my opinion. I think it all comes down to the passion. What, we're, what we've talked about this whole time is the amount of passion, where your innate talents are, whether it's one of those character traits we're talking about, and, and what are you willing to spend at every minute until exhausting on? Uh, because that's basically what it's going to be. Every one of, one of the people here has talked about, you know, it's, it's basically a marathon. It's not a sprint. And I think also it's not just buying a business if you buy an existing business, you're also buying a culture. Uh, and that culture may have its limitations. It's going to take a long time to, to progress through to get to that point where you're really reaching maximum capacity. So I think you have to, have to really assess uh, deeply if you're, if you're looking at, at, hey, I'll go write a check for this business, I'll start making money tomorrow. Uh, that may not be the case in, in a lot of scenarios. There may be a lot of issues within that business that uh, can't be changed overnight. Uh, it's, it's not easy to walk into a business and just tell everybody to go home and those that I want to show back up tomorrow come on back in. Uh, you know, you have to get to know the people, you have to get to know the skill sets and, and what's available to you in terms of your resource that you purchase. I don't think I can say much more on top of that. I mean, you're right, it's about the passion. So I don't think there is a right or wrong answer to that question. I think it depends upon the person. If there's an existing business out there and it aligns with your passion, certainly you get, you, if you feel the drive to go after it and um, you know, take advantage of it, and I think you brought up an incredibly important point. It's not a business you're getting. It is a culture, and there are, you know, we all have to deal with people, and, and so the culture aspect of it is, uh, you've got to make sure if you do buy somebody else's business that it's, it's you, you mirror that culture. So. Something aside from this, these, these wonderful young people I see in here. I'm a boomer. I'm 60. In my career, I was supposed to change jobs five to seven times. You folks in your 20s, early 30s, you'll be changing jobs 17 to 19 times. Career moves. So you, you have got incredible opportunities out there and uh, try and decide whether you're going to work for someone or have someone work for you. And particularly to, Scott and I were in Raleigh the other week learning about Generation Z. That's nine years old to 21 years old, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And the generation after that, you will be more likely to be entrepreneurs and start your own business than work for someone. But so Tom asked a great question a little bit ago, is, 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 is entrepreneur right for everyone? All of you young people are entrepreneurs. And when you go to work for that cosmetology school or that, or that, or that business, you almost will be independent contractors. You are not there. And you're starting your resume right now. And you treat that business and you treat that opportunity as your business and you take ownership of it. And I'm going to tell you, your, your superiors will recognize that 
and it's just preparing you for whatever your next step is. And if, if, if it's right, you're going to have 17, 18 more times to figure out what you want to do. Any other last questions? Well, this was a great afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming.